I'm Russ Kickle, and on this episode of American Reef, we find another magical place down near Disney. anything like me you're gonna love today's video for me I love going behind the scenes and talking to like store owners to kind of get their perspective on why they believe their store is unique right why people should shop at their store right maybe get some insight to the owner themselves what sets them apart maybe maybe their history where they're going to take the store in the future that kind of thing right um, it's valuable conversation that you normally don't have with those individuals by just you know walking in from the street and kind of snooping around and uh, today is one of those videos the store itself is with Top Shelf Aquatics uh, down near the Orlando area I happen to be down that way around the October time frame I uh, walked in the store and uh, again I was so impressed with them that uh, I asked to talk to the owners long story made short this video came about and again I was so impressed with them uh, to give you an idea how impressed uh, over the 10 years I've been doing these videos um, I've only done two local fish store kind of videos. One of them was for wet pets. The other one was with Worldwide Corals. And uh, Top Shelf Aquatics is very much in the caliber of those two stores, right? Uh, just totally, totally awesome, right? Um, talk about eye candy, right? When you walk into these stores, um, not only do you have massive selection of whether it's, you know, saltwater fish, um, to corals, but man, you want to talk about color, right? Jeez, it's that whole kid at a candy store like times a million, right? Um, my only regret was I didn't have uh, a better camera to kind of capture um, basically the store. All this video was shot on my iPhone, and um, you'll still get the idea, but I just wish I had a better camera. Uh, that being said, uh, again, Alex and Kevin were nice enough to basically, you know, probably give me a good two hours of their day. Um, so if you're ever in that area, you know, ask for one or both of them and thank them for that time. Um, because again, um, I'm sure they could have been doing other things with that two hours. Again, the store is Top Shelf Aquatics. It is near uh, the Disney kind of area. What I did in the video is I actually brought up maps so you could, cut, could see the, like, the reference points to where they're at. Um, there's actually um, a location on there. They're approximately, I want to say, 20 to 30 minutes, you know, from the Orlando Airport. Um, it's uh, not a bad drive at all if you're down there. Definitely, definitely, definitely worth checking out if you're near. Uh, if you're not, if you're not in that area, check them out online. Again, <laughs> lots of lots of candy, so to speak, to choose from. And again, rather than me talk about it, let's go hear what uh, Alex and Kevin have to say about Top Shelf Aquatics. First of all, thanks for spending the time, right? Because you guys don't know me from anybody off the street. But when I was down here in the springtime, you know what? You and I, right? I had stopped in, right? Yep. And then, you know, introduced myself and... Welcome to you. Showed you around and... And I said, hey, it's a cool shop, right? So with that being said, let's do some introductions first of all, right? You guys are, first of all... I'm Alex Dillard, okay. co-owner of Top Shelf Aquatics. Okay, and you are? Kevin Berta, the other owner of Top Shelf. Okay, so we got Kevin and we got Alex, right? Top Shelf, right? How long have you guys been in business and, you know, how long have you... Well, I guess, first of all, where, where are we located? Because, again, I'm in Pennsylvania, right? 
And from, from, for me, like from what, from the Orlando airport, it took like, what, 15-ish minutes or something like that to get yeah, here? Yeah, we're pretty close to the airport, pretty close to the downtown area of Orlando, technically in Winter Park. Nice little town outside there. A little more laid back, but close to the city. Yeah, I was going to say, it seemed, to your point, yeah. away from, like, the mess over by the parks, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, we... we um opened the store in uh-huh. February of 2012. Okay. And so we've been here over five years now. Mm-hmm. We did start out in just a single location, and later we'll see the store, but mm-hmm. um, in this same location, and then we actually expanded into our middle unit, and now where we're sitting is our third unit, which is uh, our farm and online side. And so um, just kind of took off, and right. we worked really, really hard right. to get it going. Right, so, so then you've been here five years, right? Yes, so then it's just almost six now, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and the, we haven't looked at the store yet, but there's a like shit ton of tanks already. I mean, you, how many gallons? Total gallonage, I mean, our fish system alone is yeah. a thousand gallons. We probably got 500 or so in the invert system, a couple of coral tanks that are on the retail side, about 500 gallons a piece, 400 gallon display tank which is going to be replaced for a larger tank in the near future. We're actually getting ready to put in a new invert system as well and add another 500-gallon coral system. So we'll be pretty packed, <laughs> and that doesn't include the farm here. I mean, this is uh, probably about another 2,500 gallons worth of stuff. So pretty well loaded. Definitely a lot of water. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was trying to do the math. I'm like, oh, I lost cow out of the thousands of gallons. I think it's close to about 5,000 gallons yeah. total. Yeah, 5,000. Okay, so for... 5,000 gallons, right? And to your point, right, you're you're expanding, like, where do you guys see yourself? That's five years, right? So, at the rate you're going, are you planning on even, like, expanding on beyond this location here, beyond the, the plaza? So, our, our goal right now, uh, we've actually just purchased a 4,000 square foot warehouse mm-hmm. directly behind our units. Mm-hmm. It came up for sale, and it's just so close, we can literally walk over there excess inventory or you know what have you but we just couldn't give that up we don't see ourselves leaving here or ever moving this store and so and we have no more room to expand in this plaza so we purchased those two warehouses uh, they're about 2,000 square foot a piece and our goal is actually to slowly build a newer farm over there and move everything over then once that's completed we'll probably do a freshwater location out of here so we'll have both saltwater retail and freshwater retail here and then a farm two times as big uh where we're able to um kind of you know have a grow a lot more stuff and uh, you know ship out a lot more corals okay cool um, okay so you were talking about the freshwater do you have freshwater on the other side already no not currently no, no? Mm-hmm. i always was in freshwater and i actually first got in the hobby uh-huh. doing freshwater tanks so it was something we had talked about but you know, I was, saw more of a market in Orlando for saltwater, right. and that was more what we were passionate about. So sure. we got off doing that. But I mean, I would say a good portion of our staff is pretty knowledgeable in it, and it's definitely an area that I see growth in. So sure. you know, we both think that that might be the direction we're going to go. Sure. sure. And freshwater planted or all well, of if it? If we're going to do it, we got to do it right. We yeah, 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 yeah. We've got to do some <laughs> big monster fish. We've got to do some uh, freshwater planted tanks right. for sure. You know, maybe go the mono style, all that fun stuff. Right, so, right. I mean, the yeah. goal, you know, this is about uh, 50 feet here. So mm-hmm. the goal would be just to line this entire thing with a, a three-tiered system. Right. Where we could literally have the most freshwater fish offering in Central Florida. Right. And then line the other whole wall with all of the products. You right. know, every single thing that you would need. So one-stop shop to get set up right. for freshwater. Um on the other side, in the main store, we keep so many different aquariums that a lot of them can actually be applied to both applic- you know, both freshwater and saltwater. So, um, I believe it would give us the ability to, you know, a lot of people come into the store and maybe a thousand or two thousand dollars or even three thousand dollars for a new saltwater setup. I understand that's that's a lot of money, you know, but with freshwater, you can kind of get your feet wet and start understanding an aqua- the aquarium hobby for maybe fifty dollars or a hundred dollars. So uh, we want to be able to offer kind of a wide range. And I really feel like with planted aquariums, you can have that kind of reef experience in a way with freshwater and a lot of that fun and start getting uh, a better understanding of what it takes to keep a tank. 
Sure. So um, just want to be full service. Really sure. Really be able to offer everything here. Sure. Today, then you've been around for five years you're expanding and now again there tends to be a lot more we'll say um, uh, it just in general in this area a lot of salt water and stores etc with Wait. corals right so what kind of separates you guys from everybody else I mean what, what do you think like if if I'm a hobbyist remember my, most of my hobbies are new guys right and most of them are kind of internet based or whatever but a lot of them will come down to visit disney or will come to universal etc and um you know i'm gonna say hey come visit top shelf right why do you think they should visit top shelf i mean i, I could tell them <laughs> there's a lot of candy on the shelf mm -hmm. so to speak but besides that why you know why do you think they should come well i really feel like like yesterday i helped a customer that drove from fort lauderdale to come to our store now I've done a lot of store tours and I've gone to a lot of different locations, but I think a major point is like what you were saying, you know, we get in a minimum two shipments a week and they're not small shipments. I mean, even when we've had a slower week, we still keep that system slam packed. I mean, there's probably a thousand different species in there at any given moment. I mean, throughout the store, you know, it's not even just having one RAS, we have 20 different types of RAS, you know, 10 plus types of tang at any moment. So. We really try to keep a wide selection of fish and corals, and we have a full invert system as well, snails, hermit crabs, you know, feather dusters, anemones, you, know, you name it, we keep a lot of different stuff. So I think people know that by coming to our location, they'll be able to find that one thing that they're looking for and have the selection to be able to choose from. Um, you know, aside from that, we're always staffed heavily. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've never believed that people should have to come here and kind of look or guide themselves you know we want to have somebody knowledgeable that can spend time and you know one-on-one -on -one experience and we, we actually average over 30 minutes per customer and um, we'll spend whatever time it takes you know whether you're spending five dollars or five hundred dollars to make sure you get the right fish or the right sure. inverts uh, and the right coral for your tank you know and really get you that knowledge that you need so now you also have an online version of this right mm -hmm. yes yeah how does that work well, as far as a lot of the customers who are traveling and who are going to be coming from out of town, I think that's more what they're going to be focusing in on. I'd say where our niche is is probably SPS corals. I mean, that's what a lot of our guys are passionate about, and that's really my biggest love when it comes to that kind of thing. So, and if you look through these systems here, we have a, over a thousand gallons just propagating all 100% aquacultured stony corals. So, I mean, you get a lot of variety of some of our signature pieces that are unique that you're not going to find anywhere else along with a good variety of other things like your Walt Disney or your home records and different things like that so you know all across the board I would say hundreds of things that you can go home with and find something that you know is going to look different in your tank than probably anything you have so um, one thing we do here everything that goes into these systems as well is 100% fully quarantined we run through a process that's probably more strict than anyone. And, you know, we, we just, you know, we've all been there. We've had to deal with the issues in the past. <laughs> you know, you get wild shipments mm -hmm. in, you buy from certain vendors, and you have to kind of question whether or not it's going to be, you know, very clean or can I put that right in my tank. So we just want to kind of simplify things for people and sort of eliminate those concerns where, you know, they can buy from confidence when they're buying stuff from these systems. Right. So now, there are a couple things that I want to pull out of there. You said your signature pieces. What are some of your signature pieces? Well, you know, I can go ahead and show you some yeah. videos a little later, yeah. some pictures to go along. But I would say overall, I mean, we have probably dozens of pieces that we've collected over time mm -hmm. from wild colonies. 
usually what we'll do is we'll observe them. If we think it's something really unique and special, we'll you know, throw them through quarantine, see what they do. I mean, we typically don't release anything until we've had it in captivity for about six months. And we like to really you know, check them out under different lighting, see what they do when they're growing. And you know, if it's nothing like anything I've really seen out there, we'll usually slap our own name on it okay. so people can kind of identify sure. it. Sure. You know, the guys over here will say, for example, we have a silly name called the Bill Murray Acro, but you know, all of us just love his movies. And, right. you know, we say, hey, how about that Bill Murray? And, you know, all the guys in the shop know what we're talking about. Right, and, right. You know, we have a few other pieces like that. Right. So. Okay, cool. So that's how you get your signature pieces. Always. Mm -hmm. And, okay, and then from a kind of quarantining and, and that extra care. Yeah. Right. Okay, so I, I get why you want to do that. Mm -hmm. And what, what do you think separates you from everybody else? Well, because everybody, you hear the same old, same old, so to speak. Yeah, right? I mean, really what it comes down to is just being more strict to the process and just mm -hmm. not compromising. Um, one big thing that we probably do different than a lot of other people, I would say heavily involves rebasing. You know, when you're dealing with a lot of the acropora pests, a lot of that stuff will hitchhike on, you'll get eggs and things like that that can be found on the rocks or tucked underneath on the plugs and you know that sort of thing. So if you can eliminate a lot of that that's attached with it, when you do a tank transfer, then you don't really get any of those eggs going into your next process. So by dipping it and using those things to remove the actual live pests, if they're even on there, you know, at that point you've removed the eggs and you've removed the pest. You know, on top of that, we do it for over eight weeks straight just dipping mm -hmm. and then it goes through a second rebasing at that point and then once that's complete one more additional rebasing once it goes into that system so literally by the end it's been transferred through three times dipped for over two months with a variety of different things involving bare pesticide polar rx uh, some different things we use iodine mm -hmm. some other stuff right bacterial things as well so it's it's pretty thorough and in-depth and, you know, I'd say that'd be the big difference sure. in that. And for the new hobbyist, rebasing means? Pretty much, so let's say you have a coral plug or you buy a nice mariculture, they would have a big base attached to them. So if you were to remove that big piece of rock or the plug, at that point you're removing a lot of those surface areas that could have different things like nuisance algaes or coral pest eggs attached to them. Because as more experienced hobbyists would know, Dips don't kill eggs, and that's one of the hardest things about trying to truly quarantine and truly dipping stuff to go in your tank. Without removing what's attached to it, it's just not 100%. Right. So our goal would be to realistically have everything be 100% pest-free before it ever makes it into quarantine, but on top of that, we do extra transfers, extra dips, just to be 100% sure. Because, right. you know, we don't like dipping after that. We want to do it once, and we want to do it right. So, right. you know, that's that's our philosophy on that. Even, sure. uh, it even comes down to, which I find, you know, because it's, it's, it's an ongoing process. So if we want to take a viewer box from one aquarium to another aquarium, although we're pretty sure that they're all clean, we still rinse the viewer box, retry it, and then move it. We're able to sure. sign, you know, things for different yeah. tanks, too. So, so some stuff just never even goes into these different systems. Really you know, got to keep them isolated. Obviously, yeah. keeping your hands 100% clean, rinsed, thorough, using gloves, that kind of thing. Sure. So just very strict about you know how we do things and the people who are in here working on it. So. Sure. Amen. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And it's funny you mentioned that though because again, I hate to mention Paletta again, but in one of the videos that we did probably about a year ago, and he was going through again the first thing he does when he gets his frags is he's looking. Ripped the base off, threw it away, and so it's nothing new, right? And it just goes to show you how everybody thinks that Mike's a little bit anal about certain things. Oh, yeah. goes to show you guys are even worse because not yeah, only do you yeah. do it once, you do it three times, yeah. right? Or two times, right? So that, that's a good characteristic to have and shows you how you really are different, right? Yeah. So that's pretty cool. And, um, and so, so you look at it from an online perspective, um, if somebody, I mean, do you guys have an online web presence? Is there a website? Or how do you guys kind of do that whole e-commerce thing? So we have our, you know, www.topshelfaquatics.com, and you can go right on there and shop for different LPS, softies, SPS. We currently predominantly have a lot of SPS postings on there. We really differentiate ourselves with that. Um, 
a lot of those same pieces are you know found in our local store if you just want to walk in and shop but if you're not local sure. um, you can purchase right off of the website and we'll actually box it up and ship it to you um, so that's probably the best way we are on some other outlets like some uh, many of the different Facebook groups and uh, a lot of the forums mm -hmm. but you know I think the easiest way probably to find us is through our website sure there you go we do post a little through Reef to Reef. Reef yeah. to Reef? Yep. There you go. And then we have the Top Shelf Aquatics Coral Lounge, which is the main one that's just our store postings through Facebook. So if you do the auctions on those things, mm -hmm. that'd be a good one to ask for membership for so you can see a lot of our stuff. There you go. And again, it's a membership kind of thing, so you ask for membership it's, and then... Yeah, it's free. You just yep. kind of ask to join. Mm -hmm. Okay, good deal. And um, in general, again, you're a new hobbyist, right? Um, as far as kind of like, uh, again, my kind of crowd, as far as, uh, again, kind of the SPS corals, mm -hmm. do you also have kind of LPS or tell me what you got going on there as far as the, the as, as far as easier all that corals. stuff. We have yeah. a pretty wide variety of that in the store as well. We do culture a good amount of zoanthids, uh, mm -hmm. not as much culturing on that side of the LPS, but being that we have thousands of gallons on the retail side we do offer a large variety in a lot of our auctions mm -hmm. in addition to that you know anything you're looking for we can usually get okay so you know, definitely have a wide we, we farm a lot of the zoanthids mm -hmm. and certain soft corals mm -hmm. but you know i'm sure as you're well aware and some of the viewers certain lps you know they just don't grow really fast or <laughs> some you know <laughs> really in a tank it would be hard to even replicate you know right. so um, unfortunately, corals like that are just much more difficult to you know, right. hold on to. It could take years to get a second in certain instances. So, uh, but zoanthids, we definitely have a wide collection. We farm those sure. and we sell them on our website. And um, I mean, really, it's about a lot of these species are ones that we can't even find. You know, they don't come into the wholesalers. They don't come into stores. Right. And so, if it wasn't for farm facilities. Um, Hobbyists wouldn't wouldn't be able to share them. I mean, you know, one person has it or two people have it, and, and that's about it. So our goal has always been to try to expand the collection of these pieces, and uh, growing them is really the only way. Sure, I mean, it's a time-consuming and very difficult process, but uh, yeah, that's what it takes. Sure. Okay, let's flip the ties. Say we've got some experienced viewers, right? Because we've got you know tons of different mm -hmm. viewers out there. What if they have? Uh, again, corals out there that they're looking to get rid of. How do they? What's the best way to contact you guys? The website kind of thing. Well, you know, we're always willing to uh, take offerings and right. trades and things right. like that. So, you know, when it comes down to it, we're hobbyists. So, right. This farm has been running. We've been filling it up for about a year, and it's pretty much full. So, right. <laughs> you know, we're always looking for new things, and if it's right. something unique that we don't have, we're more than willing to uh, trade and right. work some deals. But I would say, across the board. You know, just reach out. We're very flexible, right. and you know, at the shows we may see you there and work something sure, out as well. Sure, go that way. So that's a good point. Uh, what shows do you guys normally kind of take part? In? So we're very loyal to the Reef of Palooza shows. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've done yep. uh, Reef of Palooza New York, Reef of Palooza Orlando. You guys doing the Cali one that's coming up? We're going to be attending, but okay. not as vendors. Yeah, yeah, because that's uh, how, how do you get all is, your stuff it, from it this is, side of the world to that side of the world. It is yeah. very difficult to get it all over there. Mm -hmm. I would say in the following year we'll probably be doing that show. Um, this year we were at Magna. We've mm -hmm. done a few Magnas, so um, we just got done with a show in Jacksonville called Reef League. So mm -hmm. we really do a lot of shows. Okay. I mean, the Florida Frog Swaps as well. Yeah. Okay. In the Miami, so. Even some of the ones that, you know that maybe only attract a couple hundred people. I mean, right, we'll right. go. We'll bring a smaller setup and um, you know meet a lot of those customers. Right. Um, you know, help them out in any way we can. We bring up a lot of our collection, so. Um, we, we definitely love the shows. And I, I, that's why I think you'll you'll find these videos are really interesting, right? Mm -hmm. Because you, you'll get a lot of, hey, I saw you guys on this video, and hi, yeah, yeah. right? And then next thing you know, you know, you'll you'll end up putting faces to a lot yeah, of, yeah. which is really kind of cool, right? And so, um, with that being said, okay, so you guys do a lot of shows, right? Uh, in the Florida area, for example, since. Again, the, the California Palooza version mm -hmm. is. What's the next one in? We'll say that you'll be attending because we're in what we're in the October time frame now. 
Uh, what's what's the next one you guys will be attending? Honestly, yeah, we have a little dry spell with that for a bit. I yeah, think yeah. February is the next one, okay. if I remember correctly. Hey. Now, that would be, I believe, the Florida Frag Swap, and then shortly thereafter, you'd have Reef Blues Orlando coming up. And then the, yeah, okay. and then, and then that cycle back kicks back things. into the spring. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. So we'll say the February-ish time frame. Who knows if something pops up or a smaller show we can drive there? We may end up, you know, trying our hand at it. Sure. Doing something different. Sure. Sure. And then as far as the farm, let's talk about this for a little bit. How long has the farm been here, right? I mean, because I know, again, we know that the whole thing is only five years old, but like the progression from the retail kind of over, you know, to this side, how long has the, the farm been here? He could probably elaborate on it a little bit more, but mm -hmm. Kevin's been farming for years Everybody. and years, even before the store. Yeah, yeah. But that collection kind of extended into the store and the large display tanks. And uh, we actually had a farm in the back of our main store. I mean, mm -hmm. it was maybe uh, 400 square feet or 300 sure. square feet, you know. It had three large aquariums. They're about 350 gallons a piece. And uh, I mean, we just quickly ran out of space. I mean, sure. when you see these tanks, you'd think, oh, it'd take years to fill them up. Right, right. But, you know, one thing leads to another and you really uh, start collecting and probably buying too many pieces than you should. Sure but the tanks filled up right away. Sure. And uh, it started to limit you know, what we could. We had to start choosing what we could farm. Sure. And so uh, we actually tore that all out. And uh, when this space became available, there was actually um, uh, like a, a street and road sign supply store out of this. Okay. So when this became available, we said, you know, we're gonna have to build a larger farm. <laughs> and uh, I think that was just over a year ago when, okay. we, when we built and um, I mean, it's hard to believe it. Right. It's full already, and so now, now we're further expanding. So hopefully this will be the last time that we have to build a farm location. Right. But uh, we really have quite the good collection. thing in the other location, too, is it's really going to allow us to try some different things. And we've talked about a lot of things like anemone propagation, doing a lot more with the different LPS corals and things like that. Um, you know, having a lot more variety to offer our customers as well. And that's another long-term goal that we're trying to move towards. Because right now, you know, 2,000 gallons just isn't enough. I mean, as much as crazy as that <laughs> Shame sounds, on but, you, you know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I could see us easily getting up to five times that in the long run. So right. we'll see how it goes. And I'm looking for some more challenges and new things that we can take on. And right. you know, as a store, see what we can really, you know, get growing really well. Right. You know, well who knows, maybe even MPS. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's funny, the, the reason why I kind of was asking the question, I wanted to hit a little bit on your histories, right? Because we yeah. all have been playing ever since yeah. we were little, right? So I was like, how long have you guys been, again, growing coral, playing with coral, that kind of thing, right? Um, just so, in general, yeah. I, I was in the hobby, um, I would say about three years before uh -huh. we opened this store. So okay. I'm somewhere around nine, ten years that I've okay. been doing this as, as salt water. Right. Fresh water. Right. And my mother had a tank when I was born, you know, so I got a lot of experience in that. And then the local store that we actually went to for the fresh water was in Lake County, but it was just this little hole in the wall. I think it was called Chris's Fish. He had a whole side that was salt water, and I was always so intrigued by it. But um, um, to be honest, the cost is actually what sure. limited us. Always. You know, my mom wanted to keep with the fresh water because it was a little bit more affordable. And uh, we had somebody come in on a monthly basis and kind of help us maintain it. Mm -hmm. But I was, I was never as uh, maybe in, not as passionate about the fresh water as I was about all the interesting creatures in salt water. So sure. um, I got my salt water tank in college mm -hmm. and sure. the rest was history. <laughs> yeah, but it all came. <laughs> And what about yourself? Well, kind of the same thing as far as starting off with fresh water, you know, being a kid and spending time up in the lakes up in New York. I used to catch fish, you know, my parents thought I was crazy, but I would actually lay concrete blocks into the lake and keep them yes. as pets for, you know, a few weeks or a month at a time. And, you know, I just didn't want to eat them. I wanted to, you know, play with them and keep them alive. And, and they interested me. So that was always something that I got into. And, you know, my mom, she had a smaller tank, like a little 20 gallon when I was growing up, and I was just obsessed with it. You know, I was all about the red tail shark and all that kind of stuff. But when I was in college, actually, one of my roommates at the time got a saltwater tank, and that just completely changed everything. I mean, I saw all the cool corals he could, you know, keep in that system. I mean, it was just a 20 gallon nano, 
but just the fact that he could keep all those things alive and have all unique shrimps and fish and a living ecosystem all together, I mean, it was just very, very fascinating. So the next thing I know, I got a 75 gallon, and I have two 75 gallons, <laughs> and 150, and yada, 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 all right. working at a fish store, and then we end up starting this place off. You know, I met Alex, actually, when he was, um, you know, a customer, and I was doing a little maintenance, that sort of thing. And, mm. He was a business student over at Rollins College, so you know it kind of clicked there. You know, he had a lot of characteristics that may not have been my strong points. And, right. You know, we kind of came together and decided we want to do something here, and you know, it really took off well. Right, right. It's kind of always that yin and yang, right? right. It, it, it makes a good business, mm -hmm. and uh, and so it, it's funny just because when you look at it. Um, I always look at things, and, and it's like when I got married, it was the yeah. same kind of thing. Because my wife is somebody who I would, I, I always strive to become because she has characteristics that I just couldn't possibly even. I try every day, but I'm like, she's a way better person than I could ever be. She makes me like want to be that way. Right? So, you know, congrats. Not that you know, <laughs> not you guys are getting married, but I'll just drop that top. <laughs> we'll just go there. <laughs> Either way, I guess to, to that point, it's probably a good place to cut it because I don't want to show up, you know, again, your yeah. days because you've got a business to run and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, thanks again for spending the time. I appreciate it. Uh, and again, what we'll do is um, we'll spend some time just kind of going through the behind the scenes. We'll show everybody kind of like put a little video to what you're going on. And again, I just appreciate it. We'll yeah. send the video out to everybody else. And, and we thank again, you, Russ, you. for coming by and thanks you for know, letting me. showing our store and kind of teaching everybody a little bit and um, uh, really been a pleasure well like I guess this will be the first of many because every time like I told you guys <laughs> every time I'm down in the neighborhood I, I used it's a good reason to stop so <laughs> right, perfect yeah <laughs> that's perfect <laughs> <I know>. thanks <laughs> <Take my bell. laughs>